Hi, I'm Steve. Welcome to Hayley Motorsport. Today we're going to speak about engines. And more specifically, the engines that we run in our wingless sprints. I'd get at least three or four messages a week on YouTube, Facebook and Instagram about these wingless sprint engines. And it's nearly always a variation of the same two questions. Number one, what engine is that? And two, what's involved in getting them to work and run in a wingless sprint? So question one, because here in Australia, we're all soft and we can't handle a V8. So the engines are Holden V6 out of a Series 2 VN, VP or VR Commodore. Or for the guys in the US, it's basically a V6 Buick engine. As far as modifications to the engine, it's all basically standard, except for a balance, and we can crank the compression up a couple of points to a max of 9.5 to 1, which is uh, checked and sealed with this little seal before we actually can run the engine. So we're not allowed to change much, so it keeps them nice and cheap and even. Hell, last season I had a mate build a car the day before the last race of the year with a motor straight out of a rep car and put it on the pole for the feature. The A-Main got rained out on a poor bike, but shit happens. Now for question two, what do we do to make them fit and run? As far as bolting it in goes, there's a couple of different options for mounts, but I run a standard aluminium sprint car front engine mount with some adapters to go, which are these two adapters here, to go to the V6 engine. We also run some alloy blocks to bolt the block up to the standard sprint car engine plate. Um, and it also gives us clearance to run the uh, standard auto flex plate in there and a standard starter motor. We run a small battery in them. So that they're um, so that makes them self-starting. So we don't run a clutch, but we run a uh, in the standard sprint car drive line. We run another adapter that we call a cotton reel that bolts the uh, standard sprint car uni joint directly to the back of the crankshaft. So to drive them, we just hit the starter button and away they go. Move the throttle body from the back of the inlet manifold, they normally go on here, to the top of the manifold. And we change the injectors to bigger ones so they flow enough to run methanol. I've actually made a video about our injectors already. I'll stick a link up here if you want to go and check that out later. We uh, run a standard, the standard EFI computer system. Uh, we retune them to suit the methanol. So we also, uh, in the tune, lift the rev limit up a little bit to 6,000 RPM. Uh, and that gets sealed, uh, checked and sealed as well before we can run them. We move the standard power steering pump in a little bit uh, on a mount so it clears in the standard sprint car hood. Otherwise they uh, hang out the side a bit. And I also run a race sump and an external pickup. Uh, you can run a standard sump. Which has got to be drilled and tapped into the side of the block right here. You can run a standard sump, but it's not ideal because they uh, hang down below the frame rails and can, get, uh, can be a cause for damage. As far as exhaust goes, we're allowed to run whatever we want. Um, I've seen everything from standard type manifolds to uh, normally a lot of them will either run a three into two system. So some guys run a three into two system, something like this, which sound like shit. Or like I've got this uh, six into one twin system that join up headers on backwards and they join up into a single pipe and sound heaps better. I'd really like to custom make a, like a proper six into one system one day and try it out, but that would require time that I don't really have. And that's about it really. I mean, the only other things I have that aren't really necessary but are nice to have. I run some Billet Racecraft aluminium underdrive pulleys. I've also got a lightweight DMI aluminium drive shaft in it and I've replaced all the uh, rotating bolts in the engine with uh, titanium bolts from Tie Build because I think with the limited horsepower that we run anything you can do to lower the rotating mass is a good idea. The engines that we run make it really really affordable. Normally I used to build all my own race engines back in the day but I got this one built by uh, North Vic Engines in Cobram 
because I couldn't build one for the price that these guys were charging for one ready to run. They last forever. This one's currently on about 40 shows. The last engine I've got over in the corner there did well over 100 shows. And it was still going fine. We only really replaced it for uh, preventative maintenance in the end. And yeah, it's still sitting in the corner over there. I'll probably bang some rings and bearings in it and send it for another 100 shows. It also makes the competition fairly even. I've never really even bothered dynoing mine, but I doubt there'd be any more than like 10 horsepower between the fastest and slowest car in the field. So that's all I've got today. If there's anything else you'd like to know, hit us up in the comments below, or check us out on Facebook and Instagram. I'll stick the links in the description down the bottom. Otherwise, make sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel right there. I'll put the link for that, and we'll see you all next time. Peace out, homies.